Food for Real People with Joe Seeger. Hi, welcome to Real Food for Real People. I'm Joe Seeger and I love to cook and entertain, but I hate spending hours in the kitchen preparing. So if that sounds like you, well then this is the show for you. We've got stunning recipes and lots of time-saving little tips and tricks. Call them cheats. Anything to avoid all that entertaining angst. Maximum effect for minimum effort in the kitchen. That's my philosophy. So with that in mind, let's get on with the first recipe. Little cheese biscuits. I've got 150 grams of butter. Just pop that in the food processor. 250 grams of grated cheese. Now, I generally use cups and spoons for my recipes. Can't be bothered with all that, you know, fiddling around. But with grated cheese, I've given a weight just because it's different with different shred sizes and things. In with that, and one and a half cups of flour into the food processor, and a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Right. Now, the lid goes on and it whizzes into pastry. It's very simple. There, this is my Granny Wynn's recipe. I don't think she had the food processor, or maybe a treadle one, but it can be done with a wooden spoon, hours and hours. We're talking speed. Now you can see it just starting to clump together. It takes a few seconds, and it clumps together around the blade, and then you know it's ready. I think that's about enough. It's just starting to come together in a ball. Yep, that's pretty good. Right, now take the blade out. This magic mix is so sharp, I don't want to cut my finger off. Right, and you just pull it out into a little kind of sausage. I'll pull this bit out there. You can make a couple of them. Right, there it is, just a little long sausage. Now, the trick with this is you must chill it. You can't just cook it straight away. You've got to chill it, so you wrap it up in a bit of cling film, like that, just make a big sausage thing, and then pop it in the freezer or the fridge, needs about 30 minutes in the fridge, but I find a cunning tip is to have this already made in the freezer. If you're making one batch, you might as well make six, and you've got it all ready for when people pop in for drinks or morning tea. So into the fridge, 30 minutes. Just actually want my hands here getting a bit sticky. Right, now I've got one here that has had 30 minutes in the fridge. It's nice and firm. Off with the cling film. And now there it is, it's so simple. You just chop it into the shapes, just like little discs. I'll just cut those up there. You can actually cut it from frozen, which is kind of a handy tip. It doesn't go solid like, you know, ice. It's easy, right? So we'll just pop them in. And onto this, I've got a piece of baking paper on my tray. Just saves for cleanup. Can't be bothered with all that mucking around. And you can just throw the paper away at the end. Just pop those little pennies on there, like that, do a couple more. Right, and now to customise it, this is the fun part, where you do interesting toppings. Now, over here I've got sesame seeds, they're lovely, just a little sprinkle on the top, press them in. These don't have to be perfectly round, in fact, you want them to look homemade. You don't want to look like something you bought at the deli, just press them in like that. Right, and another topping is chippies. Now, this is a cunning one. Just the little, I find these little children's bags of chippies good, and it's just scrunched up so it's like the stuff at the bottom of the bag. And then they just get pressed in on the top. Corn chips are good too, corn chips are good. And anything, caraway seeds, uh, black sesame seeds, poppy seeds, whatever you want. Right, even rock salt is nice. Now, I need to wipe my hands again. Now, another really good way of using this cheese pastry is just to pull off a little piece like this and to wrap an olive. I find, make sure you don't have the stone on it, that could be a bit of a surprise, but it's a little surprise parcel. Wrap that round, pull off any excess, make it into a little kind of ball bearing. They need to be chilled, that's the trick. Don't cook them straight away or it like that, absolutely hopeless. So chilled and then they go on there, just some little round ones like that. Right, simple, all the different toppings, right, over to the oven. I'll take them this way. Now, 180 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes. I find fan bake perfect for this. In they go, and I've just got a lovely tray of gorgeous ones here done. If you could smell this, absolutely yum. There they are, lovely little cheesy biscuits. Perfect for a drinks party, perfect on a cheese board, just adds that little something, or lovely for a morning coffee. Now, I hope you'll join me after the break where I'm going to do a little variation on the wine, the water into wine. I'll be doing a can of beer into a loaf of bread.
Welcome back. Now, I live out in the country, and we certainly can't get pizzas delivered, and we don't have a bread shop nearby. So I'm quite often faced with a scenario. Spy out the kitchen window. Yikes. Red alert. Long lost rallies or friends popping in bang on lunchtime. Driving in. What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. Reach for a can of beer. Maybe two. Maybe two. One to drink for fortification and one to make bread. Because if you've got a can of beer and flour in the house, you've got a loaf of bread. Now this is one of my fabulous recipes. I'll just move this over here. In here I have got three cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt. I never put salt in recipes if I don't think it's important. You know that old recipe thing, pinch of salt, you know, wondered why it was there, probably just to fill up the page. But bread needs salt, the taste is important. And a can of beer, whoops, whoops off in the eye with it there. Now that's the secret ingredient, the beer, that's all the yeast and the rising and you don't have to do all that kneading, take your rings off, think about it yesterday, all that sort of business. Most cans in New Zealand are about 355 mils, but some are a little bit more, some are a bit less. You can just make it up to about 400 mils with a wee bit of water. I've just got a bit there. I quite often just rinse the can out. And of course, the cunning thing is you can make, you know, what not, red or something for him and thingy lager for someone else. Make customised loaves of bread. It doesn't seem to work with low alcohol beer. Uh, we don't ever have that in our house, but it doesn't seem to work with that. So just any kind of beer. In fact, you know, those nice malty ones make a gorgeous flavour. And look, that's it. That's all it is. It should be quite porridgey. Just add a little bit of water unless it's, you know, if it seems a bit dry, but it should be quite moist and porridgey. Now, it makes two of this size tin, or you can make little individual ones. People love that with a bowl of soup and their own little bread. They think you're a really clever cook, and of course you are. But I'm just going to make it in here. I'll tip it into this. It makes one normal loaf size or two of these gorgeous wee ones. Now just pop it in there. See it's quite quite sticky, not too complicated. Right, there it is. Now on goes the topping. Now, this is where you can put the rosemary and rock salt. You can actually make it flat like a focaccia bread. They think you're very clever if you do that on a tray. But these non-stick tins are brilliant and again the trick is no scrubbing, jiffing, stilo in the dishwasher. They just need a wee wipe out with a paper towel and they'll last forever. Okay, a bit of cheese on the top. That gives a gorgeous glossy top. The rock salt's nice too, but I love the cheese. I just think it looks really smart. Right, and over to the oven. It takes about half an hour for this size or an hour for a bigger tin. Right, I'll just pop that one in and here's this one has had exactly, or oh, just over half an hour. Oh, gorgeous farmhouse yeasty bread. Look at that. Now, oh, that's rather hot. Whoops, onto there. There, we've made wonderful beer bread. Now, what to serve with that? How about this for an idea? Greek chicken and lemon soup. Greek inspired chicken and lemon soup. It's called Avago Lemono Soup. And it's very simple because you can have the chicken stock in the cupboard. Thank goodness for these. Now, don't you love those recipes? Take 15 cups of homemade chicken stock. A great idea when you've got all day to spend in the kitchen. But with these things, it's just marvelous. It's six cups of chicken stock. Now, you can use um, stock powder if you wanted to, or there's nice little plastic packs now, like that soup you buy in the supermarket. I've chicken stock, all these tetra packs. Six cups of chicken stock, half a cup of short grain rice. I'm using the Cowrose brand, that's a good sort. And a bit of chicken, just to enhance it and give it a bit of guts, really. I've got a chicken breast here, just take the skin off, or you can buy like a, um, you know, uh, what do they call it, sort of barbecued chicken in the supermarket. A um, bit of rotisserie and put it in. I just pop it in now. You could chop that all up when it's raw, but if you put it in now, it kind of cooks up in the stock and then you can shred it up and it looks more natural than kind of cut up pieces of chicken. So that just goes in there. It takes about 12 minutes for the stock to cook and this one over here is going beautifully. This has had about 12 minutes here, 12, 15 minutes, just depends. Now, the trick here is turning off the heat. You do not want that stock to keep on going. This, the rice gets kind of mushy, so it's just quick, 10, 12 minutes. Okay, now, it's chicken and lemon soup. Over here, I've got three eggs. I'm just gonna whisk those up a little bit and add lemon. 
I've got uh, three to four juicy lemons, the, the juice and grated zest in there. Just add that. And you think, oh, what is she making? Chicken and egg and lemon. This is a bit unusual, but it's wonderful. A lovely tang. Now, this handy little gadget is a lemon zester. And you can just zoom it off like that. It's pretty easy. Try not to grate your knuckles. And then I found one of these, a clean dish brush, or you can use like a paint brush or a pastry brush. Just gets all of that out without a whole lot of fiddling around. You can do this. Most uh, cheese graters have one of these sides, but this is just such a handy gadget. I love it. Anything to save time. So I've got the three eggs. I've got lemon juice. I'm using the Villa Franca lemons too. They're the kind of old-fashioned New Zealand lemon. Doesn't look as snazzy as those smart imported ones, but it's really good, sharp lemon juice, and that's what we're into. Okay, now here's the cunning bit. The hot stock goes into the cold eggs. If I thought I was going to be really smart and fling this in here, I'd get great scrambled eggs. Or like that Chinese soup, which is it's great, you know, that, that's fine in its own right, but this is a chicken and lemon soup and we want it nice and smooth. So I'm gonna add the hot stock to the cold eggs. Now that's a very important part. And with the whisk going, I'm just adding that over. I've turned the heat off and that thickens it up. I do about two or three ladles, sort of a good cup, cup and a half of it. Right, and one more, just for luck. Okay. Now, that's nice and frothy and creamy. Now, this is the bit. I'm adding this whole egg and lemon mixture back to the hot stock. If I did it the other way, it's, a, it's quite a drama, I tell you. Here we go. Just with the heat off, you usually have everybody sitting down at the table when this goes on. And there, yum. And in just goes a little bit of parsley. You don't want to kind of have uh, people all waiting for dinner and think, I'll oh, just give it a little rev up on the heat because then it'll set solid. And that's fine. What happens, what you do then, you've got to have it all ready for in case these disasters happen. Just cut it up into a wedge. It'll be like soft scrambled egg and serve a salad with it and pretend that's how it's supposed to be. Now look at that, it's just yum. Right, so we've got chicken and lemon soup, Avogo Lemono if you want to be really smart and know the technical name, and bear bread, farmhousey bear bread. Wonderful lunch. Now I'm going to show you how to make baby pecan pies. They are just scrumptious and you're going to love this recipe. We start with the pastry. It's done in the food processor. I've got 125 grams of butter and it goes just kind of room temperature. You don't want it melted or too hot. Uh, one cup of flour, there it is, and half a cup of icing sugar. Now this is a marvellous thing because you don't have to do all that iced water and that fiddle and tittle about drizzling it in. You just whiz that machine until it turns, woo, until it turns into pastry. It just changes colour. This is the kind of breadcrumb stage and you just wait till it clumps together around the, around the blade in the middle. Just takes about, you know, a few seconds. It's just coming now. You can see it just starting to clump together. There it is. How quick and easy is that? None of that mucking about. I love it. Right, now, take that really sharp little blade out before my cut my fingers off. Now, here it is. Lovely, soft, buttery pastry. Wonderful. Now, in fact, it's so soft, you need to just coat it with a bit of flour. I suppose cooking books would say dust lightly with flour, but I just drop it straight in the flour bin like that. Whoops, all done. Grab it out. How about that for a cunning trick? Now, there it is. It's a cut and paste job pastry. You don't have to roll it and fiddle about with a rolling pin. I pull off, it makes about 16, I pull off about golf ball size, little golf ball size balls of it, and in it goes. You don't want to make them too thin at the bottom, you just push them in with floured fingers, obviously you can just straight into the flour bin if you need to, floured fingers and push them up the sides, keeping those bases quite solid. It's lovely and buttery, it's like shortbread, so you don't have to worry that you've got a solid old dodgy chewy bit of pastry at the bottom. Okay, and just up like that, there's nothing technical, you don't have to roll it out. These are just, these are marvellous, you can make these with any kind of nuts, macadamias, hazelnuts, lovely for Christmas, especially our New Zealand Christmas which is kind of hot for all that steam pudding things. Okay, I'm just going to do a few more to show you what we're talking about here. Kind of golf ball, little balls, and then just press it up the side. One more for luck. 
There we go. Now, it's not at all complicated. In go the pecans. Now, pecans have a kind of rounded top and a flat side, a bit like a walnut. You know, there's two halves. I usually about two or three, usually use about two or three per um, pie, just keeping that nice rounded side on the top. You can break them, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've made these with peanuts, you know, if there's no pecans in the house, but all oh, those pecans are just scrumptious. And obviously, you can just make this in one big pie. You don't have to uh, make the little individual ones. But people think you've gone to so much trouble if you make individual servings. And in fact, it's a complete doddle. Breeze to cook. Right, there we go. Just put those uh, pecans all in each little pie case. Few more here. Right, now, into the fridge. This is so important. If I cook that straight away, it turns into like little sponge cakes. You know, we want to chill it and let that butter go solid and really firm. It can go into the oven cold. So I'll just pop that into the fridge. About 20, 30 minutes is all it needs. And look, I've just got one here already done. That Butter pastry is lovely and firm around the edges. Right, now for the filling. Over here, we have got 60 grams of butter. Now, I always leave the butter paper on because you can kind of get the measurements off the side and 60 grams is just a little hint more than 50. It's not essential. I leave the butter paper on because it stops it splattering all over the microwave. Handy tip. Right, 60 grams of melted butter, one egg, Pop that in there. And a cup of brown sugar. There it is. Now, lovely vanilla. Now, I don't measure this out. I can't be bothered with the teaspoon and levelling it off and all that sort of thing. Good slosh, exactly a teaspoon. I love the flavour, so I'm kind of generous on that. Right, now, you stir that round. It goes rather gluey, but that's how it should be. Don't panic, but something's gone wrong at this stage. Rather a gluey mixture. And then, just to make it easier to pour, I do it into a little jug like that. Right, just pop that there. Now, over to the little filled cases. Now, you don't want this stuff to run all in between. It kind of burns in the oven and makes a mess, and we can do without that. Pour a little bit in. If need be, an impeccably clean finger, just to catch that drip. Just pour that in like that. You don't want to overfill them. That's perhaps a wee bit full, but this is just perfect. You get quite good at this after a while, after you made about 300. And you're going to be famous for this recipe, so you're going to get really good at it. Right, I'll just do a couple more to show you what I'm talking about. There we go. Makes about 16 each mixture. It pays to just do one lot at a time in the food processor, but, you know, have a big production of it and make a whole, um, whole six trays or so. Right, here we go, into the oven. 180 degrees. You get to know your oven. I use fan bake and I take about 20 minutes. Right, look at those, yum. Little baby pecan pies. If you could smell this, it's just delicious. I have a lot of trouble with these, stopping people eating them while they're still hot. Now, they're quite hot, and the trick is wait till you can kind of turn them like that, a little twist, and that stops the bottoms getting stuck in the tin. Just takes a minute or two. Just basically use that as soon as you can pick that up. It cools really quickly. And then you might need a wee knife just to help you get that. Ease it out. Look at those. Just delish. If I lifted them out without that twist, you'd kind of leave half of it behind. Yum, they are scrumptious. Whoops, just pulled the edge off that one. There, lovely. Now, let's run through what we've cooked this evening. We've got the lovely cheesy biscuits here and the little variation wrapped up in olives wrapped up in pastry. And don't forget that wee tip about having that pastry all wrapped up in a bit of cling film in the freezer. Over here, the lovely bear bread, gorgeous yeasty smell. And I've sliced it here, it's great for toast. With the wonderful creamy chicken and lemon soup, Avago Lemono soup. Remember that little thing, that if it goes all wrong and scrambled eggs, just serve it with a salad and pretend it was supposed to happen that way. And over here, my absolute favorite, the baby pecan pies. I've served a couple here with just on a plate with a wee bit of Cream, that's a wonderful way to serve it for dessert. Thanks very much for joining me tonight. I look forward to seeing you next week where I'll be cooking a midwinter Christmas marmalade glazed ham, turkey and cranberry bonbons, and wonderful little flaming Christmas puds. So until then, just remember, trust your taste buds and get in there and have a go. Good night.